Hello and welcome to a new Lua tutorial. Um, what I want to show you today is how to make your own library. We have used uh, several libraries in the past, for example, Auto Scroll, Darkness. Uh, we have used PNPC to make your own NPCs. Uh, and uh, what I want to do today is uh, add on top of that pile. So why would you want to make your own library? Uh, say you have like a lot of code in your file and um, after a while it just gets stuff kind of unwieldy. You have hundreds of lines in the file and uh, they do 50 million things. You have like five NPC definitions, you have uh, your background which you manipulate based on events and uh, all that kind of stuff. So um, you want to split stuff into libraries when you see that something has like an isolated function uh, in your level and you might want to reuse that in the future outside of that context. Um, and yeah, for that you can uh, make a library which you can then just load with the require method. So uh, what you want to do for a start is just go and create a new library file. You of course want to give it a fitting name. What I'm going to do today is uh, some kind of mean uh, script which just starts raining Goombas from the sky. So I'm going to call it Goomba Rain. Dot Lua, which of course is a very descriptive name, and we will now end up with Goomba Rain dot Lua in um, our folder, which is right now pretty empty. So, uh, library files aren't that different from uh, regular files. One thing that is very important is that the library files are all a table in, it, in themselves, which they just kind of return so that other code can do stuff with them. So, uh, local Goomba rain is a table, and at the end we're going to return that. And that's uh, basically like the basic setup of, uh, of a library. Uh, we create a table and return it, and everything we put in that table is part of our library. Uh, which other code can then access. So, um, where do we start? Well, uh, first of all, of course, if we want to like uh, do something over time, we would want an onTick function, right? But uh, not quite. Uh, you see, in libraries, uh, what you actually want is you want to register uh, functions to the libraries themselves. It's just like an extra line of code. So um, there is a special kind of function uh, for uh, libraries which is called for them when they have been completely initialized. It's called oninit, uh, oninit API, which is a misnomer, but who cares? Function on Goomba Rain dot on init API because it's still part of the Goomba Rain uh, namespace, and then we can call register event to Goomba Rain. We will register on tick. And one cool thing we can do in libraries, which is not often necessary, but it's still cool, is we can give it a different name. Uh, and if we then call a Goomba Rain .update, it will be our on tick function. But uh, usually you, you want to keep uh, this as on tick for clarity. Uh, and if you need a second one, uh, you can work with more descriptive names. But uh, this is actually a way to get uh, multiple on ticks in a library, which is something that in your regular Lua file, if you remember, uh, wasn't really possible. But since we don't need that right now, uh, we just have this. So uh, we have registered our own on tick, which will now run independently of any anything we put in here or in any other script file for that matter. And uh, what we can do now is we can write code just like usual. So um, we can use uh, Luna Time, which is just a timer library which keeps counting up in the background uh, to like determine when we want to spawn one of our Goombas. If, uh, if module 64 is zero, then every second or so we uh, spawn an NPC uh, somewhere on screen, right? Local Goomba is npc.spawn of ID 1, uh, and then we want a coordinate, uh, which I'm just going to call x and y for now, which is uh, nil. We want to uh, spawn it into player.section, it's basically that. There is more stuff we can do with this in a, uh, in a minute, but uh, first I want to clear up this x and y stuff. So um, we need to give it coordinates where to spawn, and I want them to be a little bit randomized. So uh, what I'm going to do is first I'm going to get the camera, uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to load another library inside of this library, local RNG. RNG, as you can tell, is a random number generator, which just gives us like a random number back. So uh, what we can do is we can say local x equals cam dot x plus RNG random between 0 and cam dot width. 
that we get like a random number between zero and the width of the camera so that it spawns somewhere on top of the screen between those two coordinates. And uh, to make it the top of the screen we can uh, for y say look up y equals cam dot y minus 32 or something so that it's like a little bit above the camera and uh, stuff like that. So now uh, nothing happens of course. And uh, what we forgot, of course, is to load the library. So local Goomba Rain is require Goom Goomba Rain. As you can see, Goombas start dropping from the sky willy-nilly at random coordinates somewhere in the camera space. Um, one thing I want to quickly touch up on before we improve that code is uh, the way you load this library. Uh, you can actually load from uh, subdirectories. Um, by just specifying a path instead of just a file name. So if we can make a new folder, call it lib libs for libraries, pack the Goomba Rain stuff in there. Now this is deleted from disk, so that complains. Uh, we open it here, and uh, now it can't find Goomba Rain of course anymore, but we can find libs slash Goomba Rain. And that will be basically the same thing, but uh, that way you can like lump all of your libraries into a uh, folder where they can hang out for your episode, for example. Uh, require will also find in the episode folder and relative to the episode folder so the libs folder can also be part of the episode folder and you can still find it in your level Lua files which is pretty handy. Um, so we have Goomba spawning from the ceiling. It's pretty neat of course but uh, of course what we could do is like customize it a little because right now it's pretty hard coded right so um, and one point of customization is this here. This is like every second so far. So uh, what we can do is we can introduce a variable called local frame um, local interval is 64, and then we can take it module interval to just kind of extract that out into a variable, which will right now, of course, give us the same result. Um, one thing you might then try to do. Is going to here uh, into your Lua file and say Goomba Rain dot interval is 32 to make like a more intense Goomba Rain interval. But as you can see, absolutely nothing changed. Um, there's a reason for this. Um, as you're trying to see, uh, as you can see here, you will try to access the Goomba Rain dot interval, which um, isn't defined here. You have a local interval, but as we learned before, if you see like the end of the file or the end uh, in the scope, then the local variables are discarded. So the camera, the interval, the RNG, they all just exist in here and only the local Goomba Rain exists somewhere else because that's what we return. But since Goomba Rain is a table, we can add stuff to the table. We have added these functions to the table, but we could also add Goomba Rain dot interval, which is then something that we also need to change down here because that's what we were trying to access and now there will be Goombas twice as frequently as before and your user code can change that stuff uh, at will basically. You can go on like that uh, however you want you can say uh, Goomba Rain .id is 1 so right now we are spawning NPC 1 but if we uh, were to change that in the Lua file uh, for the level, we could say Goomba Rain dot ID is 210, which uh, the more fancy of you will recognize as the Rinka, which will start homing down from the sky, uh, targeting the player from a random position, which makes for a pretty silly obstacle course. Of course, uh, there's always more you can do with your own library files. You can, uh, but like this concept is pretty exhausted at this point. Uh, if you need, you can make your own uh, on NPC kill, which of course takes the same overload as uh, the usual MP on NPC kill. You can uh, add debug functionality by uh, saying Goomba Rain debug is false, and then if we are in here, we can say if Goomba Rain, uh, which of course won't do anything unless we enable the flag. Goomba Rain debug is true, then we will see uh, that stuff actually happens. Spawn an idea of NPC 210. That's not the order in which words were said, but who cares? And yes, stuff like that. If we cancel it, of course, we will uh, break out of Lua so that we can get out of like messed up dialogue debugging loops. 
But yeah, that's basically all there is to it. You can uh, make your own libraries and expose variables from them by adding them to the table so that user code can edit them. And when you uh, think that you have a function piece of functionality in your level code which you can extract into a library, it is uh, almost always worth doing so. Uh, maybe you want to release the stuff later on the forums. Uh, maybe you want to uh, expand upon it to make it like more widely accessible and uh, generally it's just always cool to see uh, more stuff uh, for people to use uh, as a whole. So I hope you learned something today and I'll see you next time.